Welcome to the Center for Discovery's Integrated Arts Virtual Training Series. My name is Jessica Calabrese and I am the training coordinator of our Healing and Integrative Arts programs. Located less than two hours from New York City, the Center for Discovery is a major research and specialty center that offers residential, medical, clinical, and special education programs to 1,200 children and adults with complex disabilities, medical frailties, and autism spectrum disorders each year. Through this series of seminars, it is our hopes to inspire and teach others about our creative therapeutic programs and learnings and ultimately advance the standard of care for all individuals with complex disabilities. As we like to say, what happens here matters everywhere. This week, we welcome Nick Sherman, one of our music therapists, and Jim Cashin, our assistant chief of the Integrated Arts Department. Nick and Jim will be talking about the power of joyful celebrations and describing some of the special seasonal events that happen at Center for Discovery each year. During the presentation, please type any questions you have into the chat feature. At the end of the presentation, we will be live to answer them. Hello, my name is Nick Sherman. I'm a music therapist and the integrated arts team at the Center for Discovery. Good morning and welcome. I'm Jim Cashin. I'm the assistant chief of the integrated arts department here at the Center for Discovery. We're glad you're here today. I'd like to begin by setting the stage for our purpose in orchestrating seasonal celebrations and festivals. I want you to take a moment, if you would, think about a festival or a large celebration you went to in your past. Think about a beautiful day. Think about rich activities, meaningful programs. Think about the synergy. I like to call that affectionately the power of a celebration. Since most of us are creatures of habit, we tend to look forward to each of the year's characteristic features, and therefore, seasonal celebrations give us permission to alter our routines in order to feed our spirits. Celebrations and festivals help us to recognize different parts of the yearly cycle of the Earth and its path, path around the sun, marking them with significant special events. For our staff, residents, and our families, festivals boost morale and foster enthusiasm. Each exciting new special event provides a future of fond memories for us all. They provide a joy-filled platform for telling the stories of the great times of our lives. Here at the center, special events provide opportunities to collaborate with people from a multitude of departments, to mark predictable times of the year, and share in joyful occasions. Our integrated arts team is built on a platform of collaboration, and we do our very best work with our partners across departments throughout the center to facilitate exciting and intentional programming. Our collective team brings that spirit of purpose, creativity, intention, and always joy, not only to their daily work, but to these important annual festivals and seasonally based special events. Everything we do here at the Center for Discovery relates back to our Healthy Six model of care. The six Pillars found here are utilized to create opportunities for optimal health, wellness, and stress management. In our seasonal celebrations, we thoughtfully consider each of these domains with a particular focus on environment, emotional regulation, and energy regulation. The social and community environment is top on our list during seasonal celebrations. Just like any celebration or special event, we can use these activities as an opportunity to bring people together. Through detailed planning, teaching, and providing plenty of social opportunities, we aim to build new friendships and always foster old ones. Another component of the environment involves the setting of our events. A healthy physical environment can reduce stress, increase physical activity, improve learning and productivity. We pay special attention to immersing our groups into nature by hosting events and activities in a variety of natural settings, like an apple orchard a community rail trail, or in the woods. When considering energy regulation, we provide plenty of opportunities for exercise, through dancing, sports, and nature-based activities. Our seasonal celebrations help us all develop a daily and seasonal rhythm to invigorate our energy and help us teach the individuals we care for about the rhythmic beats of our daily life and helps us to clarify their interdependence. During our special events, everyone is fully embraced and has a special connection to the event they are taking part in. Whether it's a staff who's acting as a coach or a performer during a drum circle, 
or a proud parent in the audience. Everyone has their role, and each individual is deeply valued in that role. This creates an environment that fosters self-efficacy and empathy for everyone. Festivals are an expressive way to celebrate heritage, culture, and traditions. They are meant to rejoice special moments of life by adding structure to our social lives and connecting us with our friends and family. They give us a distraction from our day-to-day -day routine, as well as inspiration to remember the important things and moments in life. Throughout this seminar, we will discuss the various festivals and traditions that are celebrated here at the Center for Discovery. Here is a list of a few of the seasonal celebrations that take place annually at the Center for Discovery. Before the pandemic, we made it our goal to create reoccurring seasonal events on a monthly basis. Today, the whole integrated arts team is charged with meeting the challenge of maintaining these traditions while preserving the safety of everyone involved, which we will discuss in more detail later. Next, Jim will speak more in depth about some of these annual celebrations. For more than 10 years, the Center for Discovery has had this amazing good fortune of facilitating the annual Adventure Team Challenge events here on our beautiful campus and at our local YMCA at Frost Valley, thanks to a special partnership with Lon Dover and John Bredow from World Team and American Portfolios and support from our tremendous families. World Team brings adapted and able-bodied athletes together by empowering, enabling, and engaging individuals through inclusive athletic programs. We strongly believe that the exceptional athlete matters. As we discuss the possibility of doing a one-day event or an adventure for our residents and students, none of us, myself included, could have imagined it would grow to these heights. However, we've had the good fortune now of over 150 of our residents and students participating over the years thanks to this amazing collaboration. This annual event built on the premise of the acronym TEAM, the Exceptional Athlete Matters, began in 2010 with nine enthusiastic and highly adventurous athletes at Frost Valley YMCA with the inception of the multi-day, highly spirited and adapted team event. Specifically, these events offer opportunities for children and adults with the most complex needs, the ability to engage in adapted boating, biking, orienteering, hiking, and joy-filled camping opportunities. Each event begins and ends with an energetic and team-spirited ceremonies to mark the events. Anyone that's been to the annual pep rally that kicks off knows that the energy is electric. Our awesome music therapy, dance, and drama teams added a drum circle to our cheering squad that helps introduce our athletes and sets the tone for an unforgettable sporting event second to none. Adventure team challenges are truly life-changing, and we could not be more proud of the collaboration with our generous partners. This is a video from one of the elements of the Adventure Team Challenge at Frost Valley. It's a cable bridge, and so my friend Logan is navigating the cable bridge with support on either side of the bridge across a mountain brook. Wow, looking good, Logan, from Red Tide. Go, Destiny. How about those gators? Jacob's coming strong. As I mentioned earlier, we have alternated between offering in-house adventure team challenge events at the center for the most complex participants and athletes with opportunities for other athletes able to handle the challenge of staying overnight at the Frost Valley YMCA located 40 minutes from the Center for Discovery. This beautiful Catskill Mountain setting on well over a thousand acres, inclusive of a small lake, cabins, lodges, and hiking trails has been a magnificent setting for many of these life-changing events over the years. From the famous Flying Squirrel, which is an adapted high ropes seated activity where folks are belayed safely down, to the Cable Bridge, taking brave athletes across a mountain brook, to adapted kayaking and rowboating on Lake Cole, for some, an ascent up Slide Mountain, which is the highest in the Catskills. 
One of my favorite aspects of the Adventure Team Challenge events is the process of training our, our athletes and coaches for weeks prior to the event and witnessing the building, enthusiasm, and anticipation leading up to that opening ceremony. Our very own Sam Rose, the Director of Recreation on our Integrated Arts team, in conjunction with his incredible recreation co-workers, Kara and Aaron, provide essential leadership, training, technical, and logistical support to ensure a safe and fun-filled adventure for us all. Another collaboration we have is with the Coastal Team Challenge. As Sam shared during his Outdoor Adventures presentation in February, we have a special connection to World Team besides our Adventure Team Challenge. A few years back, we became involved in the Coastal Team Challenge in conjunction with our partners from IGHL for the inception of the Coastal Team Challenge, which is a multi-day kayaking opportunity for some of our more adventurous and medically cleared athletes. This two-day kayak on the Long Island Sound brings athletes with a multitude of levels together for an exciting and rigorous paddle on the open waters of the Long Island Sound. Although it's not a race, our participants have pushed themselves and excelled at this event, becoming totally caught up in the spirit of working as a team, together with the joy of participating in a large, special event with dozens of other teams from a partnering organization. As you can imagine, planning for a multi-day event and being hours from the center presents logistical challenges and possibilities, which we have, of course, embraced. We did learn that our participating residents much prefer the cozy cabins at Frost Valley and bunks to tents and sleeping bags outdoors on a, on a rocky beach or something they prefer not to do again. Thanks to our incredible donors and Center for Discovery leadership, the Center's summer concert series has been a tremendous opportunity for staff, residents, and family for over 20 years. Each year from Memorial Day through Labor Day, we erect a beautiful white tent at the Discovery Park Clinic where participants can be shaded from the hot summer sun. In addition to this seasonal crowd favorite, the Saturday's concert series offers dance opportunities, walks on our accessible paths, kite flying on windy days, and time to connect with friends and family. What better way to mark the summer than offering rich music spanning all genres while happening in accessible locations throughout the center in a safe and predictable fashion? Yet none of this would be possible without thoughtful collaboration, coordination, and attention to detail. There is close communication in coordinating a change in concert location based on the weather, which is always changing in New York. We also mindfully select concert attendees based on musical preferences and social groups. When booking musicians, we strategically select music opportunities that are varied to keep things fresh. At the beginning of the season, we recruit local musicians and talented staff to perform and then send out the suspenseful calendar to our residences. Thoughtful consideration is made to ensure all participants can comfortably enjoy the day. Paying attention to the small details is crucial to making the event a success. For example, being mindful about appropriate groupings for different genres. While some concert goers might be overstimulated by loud noises, Others embrace it and love to dance the afternoon away. When we are intentional about our groupings, that is when the magic happens. It is rewarding for everyone to be present to witness our remarkable students, staff, and families enjoying beautiful music and movement together. We could not be more proud. This is how we bring in the summer season at the Center for Discovery. After summer, we transition into our fall season. Here at the Center for Discovery, autumn is a very busy time with festivals, events, and perhaps most importantly, it's harvest season. One of our last harvests of the season is apples. Did you know cider is one of the oldest beverages in America? Apples were originally considered too bitter to be eaten, so they were pressed instead. During autumn, residents and students at the Center have the opportunity to go to one of several orchards on campus and assist with collecting apples. To make the orchard accessible for people who utilize wheelchairs, we pick apples that are closer to the entrance or use a track chair to allow them to easily access the trees. After the apples are picked, the recreation team brings a vintage cider press to many different houses and celebrations throughout the center, so more people are able to participate in pressing the cider. After pressing, it is then pasteurized to drink or turned into apple cider vinegar. 
the entire process of collecting the apples, pressing them, pasteurizing, then consuming the cider, corresponds closely to our seed to belly philosophy. The residents know exactly where their food comes from and may have even picked the very apples they press. In this video, you will see the first step of the process we use to press our apples. Dana is loading the apples into the hopper and Jim is spinning the grinding wheel in preparation for the final step of the process, pressing the sweet apple cider. Part of our new wellness program, Linda. We're cranking apples out. Then we're going to squash them. Come on, Dana, come on. This is step one. Come on, Dana. Here we go. Yeah. Feel the burn, Linda. I feel the burn. <laughs> feel the burn. Make a mark, make a mark, make a mark. Just go faster. Let's go faster than him. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 one person moving around the press while pushing a lever, like the picture on the right, or as shown in this video, completed as a team by passing the lever around in a circle. Around, we're pressing Agnes. cider, everybody. No Ready, Missy? Good job. Gorgeous, gorgeous, Go, gorgeous Go. job. Go, Linda. Switch hands. Other hand, Woo. please. Perfect. Thank you. Come on over. Dana, do you want to do something? We'll walk around the circle? And you don't want to do that. No worries. We did the hard step. Step one. How are we doing? Is it making cider? Is it pouring in yet? You're just sitting there quietly. Step it up. I hear it's starting to... Another magical annual event is our fall festival held at the Milligan Hill Farm. This exciting one-day event brings our children together from a multitude of classrooms to experience exciting fall-themed activities. School children are met by integrated art teammates and colleagues from a number of departments in the parking lot and led into the Milligan Hill Arena where they find numerous creative activities inclusive of apple cider pressing, ball crafts, a giant hay maze, stomp rhythm dancing, and fun music filled activities to name several. The day would not be complete without an annual pumpkin decorating contest. Classrooms from around the center work together to decorate their entry which are displayed at the fall festival. And on days when weather permits, we bundle kids up and we bring them for the ever popular hay wagon ride, pulled by a safe tractor operator and lots of staff support as we tour and take in the beauty of our farm. Given the majestic colors in the Sullivan Catskills, Fall Fest is an opportunity to share gratitude to our awesome Milligan Hill team through experiencing these fun-filled annual activities in their natural setting. And of course, the day would not be complete without visiting our horses, miniature ponies, goats, and of course, our most famous therapy dogs. In this video clip, you'll see evidence of a fun-filled hay wagon ride throughout our beautiful farm. Yeehaw! Up to the fall fest. April's class here. Everybody's just stopping. Everybody's just Another annual event is our winter solstice walk, together with a beautiful luminary experience. This quiet and contemplative event was facilitated for years on our residential campuses. Before being transitioned a few years ago to a local Hurleyville rail trail for the center community as well as the general public to enjoy. It's really been a magnificent way to experience a mile plus long stroll to mark the beginning of winter, together with live music campfire, and warm apple cider. For many of our residents and perhaps some of our staff, the novel experience of walking by candlelight and moonlight is the first time experience, and this can be a wondrous opportunity. This dovetails beautifully with our Healthy Six model and speaks to the significance of building rhythm and routine into our center calendar through a dynamic set of intentional special events. Our candlelit walk is made possible through a collaborative effort to prepare and set up the lights. Residents and staff in our day groups prepare the lights by filling repurposed vinegar jugs with
with sand and tea light candles. Over the years, we have used paper luminary bags and milk jugs, but we've learned that a more sturdy container is safer, brighter, and holds up better from year to year. Once the jugs are prepared and, and the three o'clock time frame is hit, they're transported to the Solstice Walk location where a team of excited people set them up and light them. The luminaries are then available for several hours for everyone to enjoy. Other considerations that we make include access to a restroom and warming stations for exceptionally cold solstices. Additional entertainment can include live music over a campfire and winter poetry on the trail. To truly make this solstice celebration a meaningful one for our residents and students, we make a point to teach why the solstice is important. Teaching about the winter months, what is happening in the environment, by commenting on the temperature or potential snow on the ground. Speaking about what the animals are doing in preparation or bringing attention to the moon and the stars. Here's a drone footage from one of our solstices at the Ridge Campus for you to enjoy. Earth Day is an annual event that started in 1970 to demonstrate growing support for the environmental protection. Here at the Center for Discovery, we strive to maintain a close connection to the land, the food we grow, and the seasonal calendar. We celebrate Earth Day by cleaning up the gardens and yards around our residents, by planting trees, and by upcycling. Earth Day is April 22nd, so it's the perfect time to prepare our gardens for planting by raking the soil and pulling leftover plants. We encourage everyone to work together to pick up any leaves, twigs, and litter they find outside of their home and work location. We use Earth Day as an opportunity to teach and learn about recycling by watching informational videos and doing upcycling activities. Upcycling is a form of recycling where instead of turning waste into new materials, you take a product that would otherwise be thrown away and refashion it into another object. For example, using milk cartons to make bird feeders, paper towel rolls to make crafts, and cutting up old t-shirts into strips and making wreaths. Another awesome multi-season tradition is our block parties. Throughout our different campuses, neighbors come together to celebrate each other by listening to music, making crafts, and playing games, and enjoying refreshments together. Themes for the block parties have included anything and everything from holiday, seasonal, and national celebrations to sporting events, birthdays, and anniversaries. Here at the Center for Discovery, we don't need an excuse to celebrate together. On our Life Center campus, the annual block party, which has happened since 2017, is coordinated by the integrated arts team around the autumnal equinox. The inspiration came through a variety of local events where they closed off entire streets to celebrate community through live music, local vendors, arts, games, and activities. So we decided we need to do something like this at the Life Center. Alas, planning began. We knew that live entertainment was a must. So we constructed a stage, assembled a sound system to serve both as the hub for announcements, raffle, and of course for the band to play on. We strive each year to get a variety of musical acts so there's music for everyone's individual taste. 
we had several different time slots for local performers and bands throughout the day. Some of these performances even featured special guest appearances from residents at the Life Center. Set to it won't be calm. Why am I and why no thing? I'm too old to die young. The block party also included an apple pressing station and wheelchair adapted sidewalk chalk art. For that activity, we had an adapted wagon that residents could push in their wheelchairs and color on the pavement. The festivities also included Polaroid photos and photo booth, taxi bike rides around the track, tie-dyeing, kite flying, games, and even a smoothie station. In the past, we have been blessed with seasonably warm and sunny weather on the day of our block parties, so we are sure to have plenty of shaded areas to relax in, and refreshments such as water, food, and those smoothies. One year we even featured a late night outdoor drive-in movie using a blow-up screen and projector. We strive to incorporate something special into each block party to correspond with the theme. On the 50th anniversary of the Woodstock Music Festival, 50 peace dubs were painted by local artists and placed throughout Sullivan County. In light of this, we made our own peace dub out of wood, which was collaged with flower photos cut out from magazines. The dub was created before our block party by the residents and staff from each house that would attend the celebration. It was then displayed at the entrance of the Life Center for all to see. The creation of the peace dub not only connected each person at the Center for Discovery who worked hard to create it, but also gave the residents and staff a connection to the county at large, which was energized by the 50th anniversary celebration. An event of this magnitude has many different moving pieces and takes careful planning and a dedicated team to make it possible. Next, Jim is going to discuss in more detail what it takes to make these wonderful events possible. There are a number of key components that are important to implement and to assure the successful execution of these exciting special events. Deciding where the event will take place is one of those first steps. Making sure it's a large enough setting to fit the number of people who attend, ensuring it's accessible for all of our participants while considering all aspects of safety within that space. Another step is deciding on a theme. As Nick stated earlier, there are several themes that you can decide on. Once this theme is picked, plan joyful activities to fit within that theme. Here at TCFD, we think back to our Healthy Six model of care when planning the day's activities. Generally, we choose one eating component with a healthy snack or even just a drink, one emotional regulation activity which may take the form of a sensory activity, calming music, or relaxing space to unwind within the event. There is at least one activity focus on energy regulation, getting everyone active and moving. This is sometimes a dance floor or an active game like a beanbag toss, a scavenger hunt, or an obstacle course. To give an example, if the theme was Halloween, we could have green monster smoothies, a sensory station with spooky decorated boxes and sensory items inside, pumpkin decorating, learn to dance the thriller from Michael Jackson, a witch hat ring toss, or ghoulie bowling. If necessary, think about how big the event will be and decide if it is best to schedule time for each group to attend. Consider safety when choosing who will come at the same time, and when in doubt, less people at one time is always more. This ensures there is enough support people to engage everyone in activities and make sure everyone is having a great time. Make a schedule and communicate with everyone about the plan leading up to that event. Here at TCFD, the Integrated Arts team works collaboratively with many different departments to make our larger and small events a success. We are in consistent communication with our entire administrative team from both residential and education programs, as well as medical, nursing, and clinical teams to ensure we are looking at the event from every angle. We speak to our environmental services and security departments to inform them of what is happening. It takes a village to make an event successful. For example, when planning our road team sports event held off campus, we need to coordinate athletes, their coaches, and support staff. 
which is typically a one-to-one -one support ratio with additional strategic support staff in place. Since this is an overnight and multi-day event, we coordinate additional evening staff, drivers, and nursing teams to assist with medications and evening supervision. Even the most well thought out special events need to have a backup plan. Weather is sometimes a huge factor when planning outdoor events. When in the planning phase, think about what the plan is if the temperature is too hot or cold. If there are sun restrictions or simply a washout rain day. Will the event be canceled or rescheduled to a new day? Can you move the event inside? Can we do a virtual celebration instead? Which we'll talk more about later. Finally, safety should always be your number one priority. It's important to be confident to make the decision to cancel an event or make a change to keep everyone safe. Music has always been an integral part of life, and it should come as no surprise it plays a major role in how we celebrate and remember events. Imagine graduation without pomp and circumstance, or a bride walking down the aisle without the wedding march, or some other ceremonious music. How about the holiday season without Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa music? Music is an inseparable part of many of our lives, and research shows that it affects our behavior at a variety of events. Selecting the right kind of music for the occasion is very important and takes thoughtful consideration. Will there be a solo performer or group of performers that will be creating live music? Or will it be a curated playlist that serves more as background music? Both of these applications are very important, and selecting the right one can bring the appropriate energy and mood to the event. During many of our festival and celebrations, we provide live music. Throughout my time at the center thus far, I have seen a wide application of live music in a variety of settings. Sometimes this is a performer or a small group of performers providing background music for an event. At our Green Shovel Awards, we utilize a small group of musicians comprised of music therapists and interns from the Center for Discovery. One benefit of having a live band is that music can be sped up or slowed down to match the energy of the room. The music for this event is typically medium tempo, familiar music done entirely instrumentally. This is intentional so the listeners will have the satisfaction of hearing songs they know, but without the distraction of the lyrics. This event is designed to be a social occasion where people can gather to have conversation, share stories, eat, and celebrate. We choose not to sing so the attendees can socialize and mingle without being distracted by additional amplified voices through a speaker. In this case, we provide the underlying musical support for the event. We are not there to be the main event. However, in many other circumstances, music is designed to be the main attraction. I'm thinking not only of our block party or the summer concert series, where the purpose of the event is to gather to see different groups of talented musicians perform, but I'm also picturing holiday celebrations, where the music therapy department performs specific music of that holiday. Whenever we perform on these occasions, many staff members and residents come up to sing along with us, play instruments, or sing along from afar. However they participate, we are constantly reminded in these moments how music brings people together. Research shows that music, especially singing, strengthens bonds with each other and releases oxytocin from the hypothalamus. Sometimes during celebrations, we feature individual stations that incorporate music as part of a dance or cooperative performance. During Fall Fest, we use a chant appropriately titled, Welcome to Fall Fest, to encourage people to participate in a collective musical experience. During this, we encourage residents to play a simple rhythm on a drum or instrument of their choice and repeat after us with a simple lyrical chant. Reflecting back to the Healthy Six model, this experience offers a sense of connection to their physical environment as well as social and community. It promotes both energy regulation and emotional regulation. These celebrations are an extremely important aspect of life here at the Center for Discovery. They connect us to the earth, to ourselves, and to others. But what happens when our ability to connect physically with others is disrupted? In this next segment, I will discuss how we adapted these celebrations and traditions during the ongoing pandemic. 
One way everyone has been coping with the pandemic is through the use of technology and virtual meetups. Fortunately, we have been able to have similar success providing concerts, dance sessions, and art programs through Zoom. To continue some of the traditions that we would typically have in person, we have done several collaborative initiatives of students, adults, and staff to record and submit entries to make video montages. For example, a virtual tree lighting and menorah lighting, a virtual school play, and virtual flash mob. Some of our traditional concerts were held digitally with pre-recorded fan favorite songs compiled into a concert that could be watched on demand from the comfort and safety of their own home. We even held a virtual turkey trot where participants were encouraged to walk, run, or bike anytime they would like and log the number of minutes on a collective form. With safety as our number one priority, we organized a handful of in-person events. Our luminary walk was shifted from a large community event to three small scale campus events. Each day had a meticulously planned schedule to ensure a limited number of people arrived at one time on paths that left enough room to practice social distancing. People were also there to direct participants to travel one way through the luminaries so they did not pass others on the way back home. We also celebrated the solstice with virtual winter poetry reading. We organized pop-up pumpkin patches so our residents and students could choose a pumpkin to take home and decorate. Then groups were encouraged to submit their entries online for a pumpkin decorating contest. Our animal-assisted intervention and education team from Milligan Hill Farm brought ponies and other animals to the different residences to bring the spirit of the farm to their door. During the height of the pandemic, we looked for ways to reach the residents with live music while we were unable to enter any of the residential houses. So we created a performance group called the Traveling Troubadours and went house to house to serenade everyone by playing and singing outside of open windows and doors. On some occasions, staff brought students and residents outside with each person located at least six feet apart to enjoy the music. The idea for this group was inspired by the videos of people all over the world singing from their balconies and out of their houses with one another in unison. The traveling troubadours were able to conduct just over 100 sessions rotating between 18 different houses from the end of April to the beginning of July. And one standout moment that I will always remember is singing Hey Jude with the folks from one of our pediatric houses. The guys and girls were all spread out throughout the living room and hallways. A few students were singing enthusiastically and playing instruments while the staff sang and played along too. At a time where most of us were disconnected from each other and unable to interact in person, it was a, such a pure moment of connectedness guided by the music. At the end of the song, everyone was singing the infamous Na Na Na's together and it was like nothing else mattered in that moment. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to continuing our seasonal celebrations. We will leave you today with a video of our traveling troubadours. Thank you. Thank you, Nick and Jim. For more information about our Integrated Arts Department, visit our website or reach out to us by emailing integratedarts at tcfd.org. We will now be going live to answer all of your questions. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual seminar. My name is Connie Oloretto, and I'm the Senior Director of the Music Therapy Program here at the Center for Discovery. I'm sitting with Jim Cashin, one of our presenters today and the Assistant Chief of the Integrated Arts Program. We are here to answer any questions that you might have. So if you uh, just wanna go ahead and use the chat feature and type those in, Jim will, will definitely take your questions. 
And uh, it looks like we have one already. This one's coming at us from Tommy. Tommy would like to know, Jim, what activities are planned for the summer? Of course. Tommy, we're excited to be offering some outdoor recreation programming all summer long. We've already got our bicycles tuned up. We're planting seeds. We'll be doing outdoor gardening. So I see a summer filled with outdoor recreation. I see a, a summer with, maybe with some virtual concerts. Um, I see us getting back to semi-normal, but being safe about it. So a lot of outdoor recreation. Looking forward to it. That's great. Um, thank you again for joining us today for the, for the virtual seminar. Um, if you're interested in some of our past seminars, if you go to www.thecenterfordiscovery.org, you'll find a, a link to our YouTube channel, and on there you can find all the different seminars that we've presented um, on all the different aspects of our Integrated Arts Department. So we've talked about recreation and dance and music therapy. So um, in horticulture, so please, this, this presentation will be there as well as all those other ones. So we invite you to check that out. Um, looks like we got a wonderful presentation. Compliments Thank to Jim, you. very informative. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, so like I said, you can check out our YouTube channel to get all of that information. Um, and also on our, our website, there's a link to our Integrated Arts page. There's a whole bunch of training materials you can find there, some program guides, all information about all the programs that we offer. We are just so pleased to be able to offer these seminars and to be able to offer all of these training materials for you to use. Um, whoever you happen to be out there, we've had a really varied audience and, and we appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions popping in here. So uh, I think maybe. I just wanted to share some gratitude, Kanye, to you and to you, Jess, for pulling this together each week. This is our 11th week, so we really want to thank everyone for joining, but this would not be possible without the leadership on your end. So thank you uh -huh. for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, so I think we will, we will close for today. Next week, it, we're taking a break for our spring break. And then the following week is our Move It presentation that was rescheduled, right? I got that right. Okay, so that's our Move It presentation. Um, so not this coming up Friday, not a week from today, but two weeks from today, we'll be talking about our fitness programs. And uh, again, if you have any questions or anything comes to you after uh, you leave the presentation, it's our email address is integratedarts at tcfd.org. And we will definitely get back to you with any questions you have. And if you have a great idea about what you'd like to see in future trainings, let us know that too. So thank you, Jim. Thank you, Connor. Thanks for joining us, everyone. All right. Take good care. Take care. See ya.